Alright guys, so with the tire texture out of the way, the next thing we're going to be working on is the brake disc. We're going to be texturing the brake disc next, alright? So, this is actually the brake disc. In my case, my brake disc is actually attached to my brake, I mean my hub, my wheel hub. So, this is actually the wheel hub, alright? The inner area here, the inner circular area. Usually, it's separated from the uh, brake disc. Uh, I don't know, maybe sometimes they are attached together. Uh, in my case, I haven't seen any of the materials together, but I just decided to actually put it to the, together, all right, like that. So we're going to be texturing it all at the same time. So let's go over to the uh, texture area here. So this is our global view, right? So we're just going to select that and go into local view. But I just want you guys to know we're going to be uh, doing all of this area of the tire, right? The tire setup, including the rim, the uh, wheel nuts and everything. And then we're going to delete every other tire and everything else that we've textured over here we're going to delete it all around and i want to take all of them and duplicate it all around you so we're going to put it here there and there so we're not going to be texturing them separately so we're just going to delete them and then replace them so let's take the break this now let's go over to local view all right so under the material stuff we're going to click on new i want to name this break break disc all right like that i can go with a c if, uh, if you want i'm going to press g and move this over here so let's go with the basic setup of this, okay? So this is a metallic material, right? So we're going to set that to a full metallic, like that. And um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set this uh, roughness. The roughness, we're going to control it ourselves. And the sheen tints and everything else. Okay, so that's it. Now we can get started. So the first thing I'm going to add in is a color ramp, all right? So let's add in a color ramp. So converter, color ramp, right here. So I'm going to set that in here. I'm going to leave that on linear. And I'm going to set that to, I'm going to move this to about here, right here, like this. And I'm going to move this right here, right under the E over here. All right, I'm going to decrease or increase the brightness of this one quite up to something like this. I think that's too much. Let's drop it down a little bit. Is this enough? No, just one more, like that. Okay, maybe one more, just like that. Nice. So we're going to add in a noise texture over here. So let's go into texture, noise texture, like that. And I'm going to increase the scale to 150. To 150. 150. Now before we actually do anything else, let's take the break disc, alright? And let's press Ctrl and A. I want to apply the rotation and scale, just like that. Just make sure the center is on the uh, center of the object, like that. Okay, so you can see where mine is. So that should be good. Just set this to 150. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Let's go into material preview. Hold on, control and shift. And let's click on this one. And let's see what that looks like. So you can see what that looks like. So once you know what effect is going to take on this one, you can actually change it if you want. But you can see we have something going on here. It's scaling on this side. So we're going to fix that with the texture coordinate. So let's add in a texture. Or is it input texture coordinate? Like that. And I want to set that straight, the object, into the vector. Like that. And that should fix it for us very nicely like that. So this is the size I was actually going for, not that tiny stuff we had before. Alright. So what we're going to do next is we are going to set the factor of this one into the factor of the color ramp right here. So we'll take a look. We're just dampening the brightness down a little, or increasing it instead. So we're increasing it just a little bit like that. Now what we're going to do now is to go down here. I'm going to add in a mass grave texture. Let me pull this close to about here. I want to add in a mass grave texture, so let me just press shift and D on mass grave. So let's press shift and S to for the switch type menu. So just press shift and S. So we're switching, you can see it says switch type 2. So we're going to change that to a texture, mass grave texture, like that. And we're going to go with the scale of 4.5, like that. I'm going to go a detail of 15 and uh, dimension 0. And the linearity, we're going to go with 2.8 like that so I want to set this one into the vector right here like this and I want to add in another color ramp let's just duplicate this one <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> and then <clears throat> sorry I'm just gonna move this pretty close to this area we're gonna keep that one at the end I'm gonna move this to about this point and I'm gonna decrease it down <clears throat> Wow. sorry let's increase it a little bit more so to about here, let me increase this a little bit as well, to about there, and there we go. So to about there, and we're going to set the factor in here. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So you can see what we have going on. We're just reducing it a little bit. Let me see. 
yeah so we're just gonna keep it there and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in another color ramp down here I wanna add in a noise texture so let me just duplicate this again we're gonna set the object into the vector and the scale we're gonna go with a much bigger scale that is 1000 like that and I'm gonna set the factor into wait first of all let's set the detail to 1 All right. and uh, I'm gonna set the factor for the noise texture up here let's actually increase the let's drop the detail to 1 and let's increase the distortion to 2 All right. so let's take a preview of that and you can see what I'm going with this is what I'm going with sort of a rusty look just like that all right so let's take a look at this one now so you can see this is just uh, tiny bits of grains we have going on here and I'm going to set that into the f this factor into the factor of this color ramp here and I'm going to adjust this around a little bit so let me just move this right at the tail of the L over here and I'm going to move this one as well right under this this arrow we have going on here and I think we're going to keep the color the same yeah so let's take a look at this and you can see what we have going on just like that all right so what we're going to do now is to add in a sub light let's go over to a mix the color and add in a mix RGB I want to set this to sub light all right so I want to set the color ramp this color ramp into the top color over here and I'm going to set this one to the bottom like that and now what we're going to do now is to increase the factor all the way to one let's take a look at that what that looks like so you can see I just increase the factor all the way to light to one and you can see what we have going on like that let me see if I can increase this one a little bit let's see if I decrease it okay let me just undo that now let me see maybe I can decrease this one instead let me try dropping it down so I'm just going to decrease it just a little bit like that <clears throat> so we have that going so what we're going to do now is to add in a bump map now. Well, first off, let's add in a soft light again. So we already have one here. I'm just going to duplicate it up here. And I'm going to set this one to the top layer. And I'm going to set this one down here to the bottom layer like that. And I'm going to set this into the base color. All right. So we're going to take a look at that. And you can see what we have going on. Yeah. So that was, what, that was the look I was trying to go for. And you can see it's looking really, really good. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to, <clears throat> sorry, I'm going to select this one. Let's set this one into the roughness, alright? So it's going to control the roughness for us. So not all the areas are going to be that rough because this is sort of a rusty kind of look. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay. Not what I was expecting, <clears throat> but let me just take a look. Let's go over here. Let's take this one and see if we can increase. Yeah, so let's increase this up a little bit. Let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm going to move over here. Let me see what we can do. Let me just increase that up. Let me take this. Drop it down. That is making it more reflective. So yeah, I think we can go with that. It's not that reflective. I could swear I got something much sort of a variation in uh, reflection when I did this before. I don't know why that isn't happening here, but we can still go with this. It's not that bad. All right. <clears throat> the final thing we're going to do is to add in a vector bump node over here. And we're going to set this into the height right here. I want to drop this to 8.1 and the distance we're going to leave it at one i want to set this into the normal just to add in some bump to this let's take a look so you can see it kind of adds some roughness to it okay so now the reflection is actually being defined properly all right there we go so you can see that is looking more like a i don't know what i'll call it but a sort of you know those kind of metal that you know look like that i guess <laughs> okay so that is the first thing. We're going to be using two materials on this piece. So we're going to click on the plus sign here to add in the second material. And let me just load the material real quick. Just right here. All right. So let's work on it. So the second material, I'm going to click on new and I'm going to call it the, uh, what do we call it? The break disc. Secular. Secular. All right. Just like that. 
So what I want to do is to add in a, let me just take a look at this real quick. Let's set this to a full metallic. Again, it's a metal, so full metallic. And we're going to increase the anisotropic and the anisotropic rotation to a full one. And we're going to define the roughness ourselves, so we're just going to keep everything the way it is now. So the first thing we're going to do is to add in a color ramp, right? So converter color ramp up here. And we're going to leave it at linear. So let me just zoom into this area. I'm going to drop this to around here. And I'm going to leave this right there. So I'm going to set this to a full white. I want to take this one and drop the color down to something gray, right? Something quite gray like that. I think it should be good. Yeah. Just bring this here. Drop it down just one more like that. And I'm going to shift and D this to get another color ramp going. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to move this over here to about this point. I'm going to set this one all the way to the right hand side. Alright. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a noise texture. So texture, noise texture, like this. So once we finish this material, you can see what I'm trying to go for. Just keep doing what I'm doing and you get what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to take this one now and we're going to add in a text coordinate, all right? So text uh, on the input, I'm going to add in texture coordinate right here. I want to add in a gradient texture as well. So add in a gradient texture to this piece. I want to set that to spherical, all right? So I'm going to set the object into the vector right here. I'm going to add in a mix RGB. So on the color, add in a mix RGB right here. I'm going to set the color into the color 2 over here. And this object into the color 1 over here. I'm going to change, okay, so we're going to keep it on mix, pretty much. I think that was what I went with, like this. So before we actually continue, I just want us to go into edit mode of this object. So this is where we want to apply the material, okay, so we're going to take this and then that, and I'm going to take this one as well. I'm going to move down here and take this one as well, all right? So these are the ones we want to apply it to. So I'm just going to click on assign to assign that material to it, just like that. Okay, so let's take a preview of this. You can see this is what we have going on. Uh, let me set it into, let me set the color into the vector area of the noise texture here. And now let me take a look at this. Still not getting anything, why? Okay, let's increase the factor here to a 0.99. 2.99. Yeah, like that. Uh, let me take a look. Do we have, there's nothing visible here still. So we have to, we are going to have to tweak the noise texture here. I'm going to increase the scale to a 1200. And I'm going to increase, so you can see what we have going on right now. And I'm going to increase the detail. I'll just keep it on 2. Just keep the detail on 2, like that. That was what I was trying to go for. And now the final thing we're going to do is to, so first of all, let's set this to the base color. I'm going to set this into the roughness. And now we're going to define the uh, normal as well. So let's go to uh, vector. I'm going to add in a uh, bump map. I'm going to set this into the height right here. And let's reduce the strength down to 0.001. Like that. I want to set this into the normal of the principal BSDF. Like that. And now let's take a look at what we have. Come on. There we go. So you can see what I was trying to go for. And you can see it's really looking really, really good. But the one more thing I want to do is, let's go into edit mode, okay? So with the ones that we apply the uh, the break circular to, we're going to select those ones. If you don't have them selected, just select the material and click on select, and it selects them for you. So the last thing we want to do is to, actually, you can see it's pretty much sharp over here, right? So we want to smoothing that out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is to go into edit mode. I'm going to press E. We're going to extrude this in just a little bit. So just press E, and then press X, and then extrude this in the X axis. Is it the x-axis? Why am I moving this right now? Sorry, let's undo that. So press Ctrl Z to undo that. And what we're going to do is, I don't think that was the x-axis, was it? Let me see. Let me go into edit mode. Oh, okay, so we have the orientation set to normal. Let's change that back to global before we do this. So I'm just going to press E again. And I'm going to press X. I'm just going to pull this in a tiny bit like that. And you can see what we have going on. Really cool. Really, really cool. All right. So that'll pretty much do it for the break disc. Let's go over. So if you want to change the color of the break disc here, if it's too bright for you, you can use a, uh, what do you call it? Is it, you can define it with, uh, I'm not sure, maybe with this one. Okay, this is not the one we want to affect. The break disc. There we go. 
so this this all contributes to the color so is the base color you want to change okay so those are the ones contributing to the base color so you might want to change them here so for example you want to change this you can see it's giving it that rusty look sort of brownish look like that that is where you want to do that in fact i think i'm going to go with that instead of the uh, black and white and you can you can see this one is also affecting the base color so you can tweak that a little bit as well so maybe just a tiny bit orange maybe that is too much so i'm just going to increase no not here drop this down just a little bit and i'm going to drop it to the white area just a tiny bit like that and let me get over here let me increase this a little bit it's too much oh no not that kind of increase I meant the color so let's undo that and I'm gonna increase the color just the white area a little bit more and there we go so let's take a look at this in cycles I'm just going to show you guys the node real quick hopefully you have the same thing I'm gonna show you guys this in cycles so let's press Z going to render it let's take a look at what this looks like Alright, so there we go. You can see in cycles it's a little bit more bright over here. So we can tweak this with. In fact, I think the tire is going to be creating some shadows on this. So you might not want to do this. But if you want to do it, just decrease the brightness on both sides. So you want to decrease this. Take this one as well. Decrease it. And you can see the color drops down a little bit. So to something darker, like that. And you're going to do the same thing with this. Drop it to something darker. Just like that. You can see it's looking more dark like that that was what i was trying to achieve with the uh, break disc hopefully you guys were able to do that as well let's go back to the global view let's see how this looks with our tire just zoom in real quick it's gonna take a while to load and yeah i think it's looking great with our tire very great very nice we go back to local view Let's take a look at this in nice I kind of want to increase the uh, this noise here a little bit let's see if we can let me see what we can achieve with that I don't know if increasing it is a good idea let's try 300 Okay, so if you want to increase it, you can actually increase it to the amount you want. I think I'm going to keep it on 300 right now. Let me try something really low. Like, uh, Alright, so you can tweak it to whatever you want. Or you can even change the whole material yourself if this doesn't look too good for you. So this is where I'm going to end the video for the brake disc. Looking great in EV. And yeah, the next one we're going to be texturing is pretty much the brake disc or the rim. But that will not be today. So yeah, see you guys in the next.